the things he used to say was he was the one that carried the club for however many years he was there. You know, he 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 loves the club. He loves he loves Tramia. He loves them. I know he, I know he's a Man City man, but he loves Tramia. Um, and he always used to say, "I've carried this club. I've done this." But he is a character, and he was he was dead nice. You know, he was good. His training was good. Um, and he did he was great with me. You know, I mean, he got on well with my dad as well. They 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 would they they got on. So they'd always, you know, have a natter after games, or they might go to the pub sometime and have a have a drink and that. But they were they were dead nice. Um, I enjoyed enjoyed it being there. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have probably have got as far as it did. But there was other people as well. You know, likes of. Warwick, Glenn, John McMahon, um, you know, Sean Garnett was was youth team manager as well. So yeah, but Nico was definitely one of the main people that got me well, he, like I said, he got me to come training even when I was off school, you know, on the holidays. So did he have kind of the aura around him that as a as a young kid that I feel that he has around him now and he probably had around him in his playing days as well? He's someone yeah. that you, you wouldn't want to cross, would you? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I've seen the I've seen the uh, the Leicester City Leicester City video with it. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, and he, and he's told the story many a time. And he's, he, you know, there's been stuff, you know, in training. We you do the shooting practice, you do the crossing and finishing, and he'd say, "Any one of you lads chip me, and I catch it, I'm gonna kick the ball away as far as I can. And if any one of you chips me and he does it, I'll run after you, and I'll kick the shit out of you." That that was him. He he'd make sure he'd say not happening. Doesn't happen to me, and it doesn't happen to anyone else. So don't be taking the mick. So, but yeah, he he was tough. He was hard, but he he'd also be fair in a way as well, and he'd also look after it. But when stuff needed to be done and train, he'd always you know not harsh, but he'd always be like, come on, come on, come on, come on, more, more, and then. Once you've done it, he'd be like, "Well done, you've done well." So, so yeah, he, he was a character, and and uh, probably young lads probably would look up look up to him because he's been there and done it. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I guess the same goes for for Acto and for for Joe Murphy yeah, John, and Danny Corn. So, what what a, what a bunch of people you had to learn off, really. Yeah, John's up. John is unbelievable. Like the training, he he got me coming in in early as well to into the gym every morning with him. He said, "Do it in the morning because if you do, try, if you, his advice was if you do it in the afternoon, you and you've trained hard, you don't want to do it. Whereas if you do it in the morning, you're ready to then train. So I used to go in every morning into the gym with him and do weights with him. And um, obviously, he could lift a little bit more than what I could at that time, but it was it was you know I'd still do it and I benefited from it. Um, and he he was just he was the, he's the nicest person you'll ever meet and. I've not spoke to him for a while, but I know he's at Liverpool, and I know obviously um, the company I work for do a lot of stuff for Liverpool. So I have come across him a couple of times, but he's he's such he, like you you've you've met him, you know him. He, he's he's the nicest person I've ever met at football. Um, and then obviously Russell Howard was different. We used to maybe stay after training and do like bits of kicking and bits of like little kicking games that would benefit you more. In, when it comes when it needs to it's just practice everyone was different and and those two were different but john john was john was the best he was i think brian little once described him as the hardest trainer he'd ever seen um so it's probably no yeah. surprise that he's gone on to achieve what he has in the game really in terms of yeah what he's oh, yeah. doing at liverpool now oh yeah he, he, he'd be like i know les les would be an early but john would be would be in Les's uh, physio room and stuff, and you know you constantly get getting fined for doing stupid things. But he was always, you know, first in and potentially last out. And you know, even on a, like a training, he he treat training as as it was his last training session or his last match. It'd be that would be as you know, if his next match would be his last match, and he would, that was just the way he trained, just as if that was it. I'm done out. You know what I mean? He, he was. He was that good, and he didn't. He couldn't sit still either. He was always, and then he'd have. He brought in his goalkeeping coaching, which then I got involved in to help him with it. And everyone loved him. Everyone loved him at the club, and it was just unfortunate that he picked up injuries and 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 other things happened. But it goes to show that the hard work 
you know, it does work. You get where you can with hard work at Liverpool. He's, you know, they love him there as well. So, you know, fair, fair play to him.